Hello, I'm Dr. Inman. This is a miniature lecture on Lyme's disease in the canine. Lyme's disease, of course, is caused by Borrelia spirochete, a bacterium that basically infests the brown deer tick, which basically then bites, <coughs> excuse me, which bites the dog essentially and transfers the spirochete into the animal's body essentially. That is how it's gotten. I'm here in northern Idaho, a place called Coeur d'Alene, and we <coughs> can't get across the street to get to my mail without running and swooshing and moving out uh, a bunch of, of uh, white-tailed deer, essentially. So we have deer all over the place. However, we don't have the Lyme's disease condition here because there's very few ticks, and also the ticks in this area do not carry the Borella, uh, uh, the Borella um, burgdorferi you know, bacterium spirochete that basically carries the disease. Now, it's imperative to understand <clears throat> the majority of the problem that we have with that particular spirochete or bacteria, which is treated relatively effectively with antibiotic therapy, is not the antibiotic or is not that bacteria which we're able to eliminate with actually the uh, tetracyclines or oxytetracycline medications that we use. And it certainly is indicated when we have an acute case of that if in fact we can. But a majority of the cases, well over 95% of them are subclinical. And then the body just handles essentially the nature of the actual problem with joint problems, etc., etc. But the complexes, the immune-mediated complexes that basically end up residing in the actual uh, uh, joints essentially, which produces a problem where the animal has joint pain all, the, all over the place that doesn't seem to respond to much of anything, is due to the fact that we have an autoimmune phenomenon here uh, in the actual joints and so the joints become the central point of the autoimmune uh, discharge of histamine etc etc so we always have this joint pain so we can get rid of the spirochete with antibiotic therapy however it leaves a residual of sometimes in some animals it leaves a residual of the actual infection uh, I'm sorry, the immune-mediated process that's occurring in the actual system. And so our approach to treating this is, first of all, make sure that we get rid of and, and, and eradicate the bacteria from the system with the use of antibiotic therapy, which is standardly used. And then the rest of it is to handle the autoimmune type of phenomenon, a problem that we see in these animals. And we use any number of, of frequency-specific laser therapies to treat these joints. We'll use frequencies for joints such as 153 for joints. We use frequencies of 887.5, 73.24, 667, 343, or 4 immune-mediated disease processes. And the use of those four frequencies, <clears throat> which we can put into this animal and scan the whole body essentially, just as easy as this, essentially is the way that we treat this, these conditions. We treat these conditions in all mammals. I would suggest this is also how we treat humans when, that have Lyme's disease, although it's not my part to uh, recommend any kind of therapy for a human application as I'm a veterinarian, not an MD. So I'm not doing that even though we have successfully been able to treat um, uh, these uh, with these frequencies all mammals that have Lyme's disease or Lyme's disease-like like, uh, symptomology. Again, as I told you, in this part of the area, we don't get a chance to treat them very much because we just don't have Lyme disease in northern Idaho, although we should because we have all of the vectors that are available. This just hasn't moved west yet from the east coast where we see most of our cases of Lyme disease. There's vaccines for Lyme disease. However, they are not necessarily going to handle the problem that is residual after Lyme disease is on board, which in fact is the autoimmune complexes that are basically um, establishing in most of the joints of the body, especially joints that have had injury to them or at least are, are compromised in some way, shape or form. And those air areas basically build up cells that are sensitive to the um, um, autoimmune phenomenon essentially and then what occurs is we end up with uh, conditions involving uh, polyarthritis. So our treatment can be for pain with the laser. Our treatment can be for the bacterial infection, 784, the frequencies for the joints and the autoimmune frequencies are essentially used. Usually four sets of four are used. We use it twice a day for three days, once a day for three days, twice a week for two weeks, and we may have to nudge this about one lasering, which lasts 180 seconds. We may have to laser them once every four or five months to keep them and keep the joints <clears throat> um, uh, from being um, angry, essentially, and giving the animal um, stiffness and pain, essentially. We do, very commonly will utilize the adjustment routinely when we see these animals, too, because it's just another chance for us to optimize the neurological function. I'd have you go to the website, bombtech.com, and look at the technique of animal adjusting that we use, and also the frequency-specific laser therapy. We have the frequencies for this approach, and also about 2,700 different disease conditions actually mapped out and available if you are interested enough to take this technology on. Essentially, we provide you with those frequencies so you're able to take care of and effectively treat this condition. This has been a lecture on Lyme's disease.
I'd have you go to the website bombtech.com and look at frequency specific laser therapy. You won't find any necessarily any information specifically on Lyme's disease on that site, but rather I'll realize that's one of the disease conditions that we focus on when we deliver the advanced courses and the basic courses on laser therapy. Thank you and have a great day.